Oh my goodness, it's cold out there. It's uh, at least on the day of the recording, it's cold. It's minus uh, uh, 19, minus 20 degrees Celsius. Uh, fortunately, there's no wind chill, so uh, it's. Uh, but that's still plenty cold, folks. It it's getting too cold for this. And I'm a Canadian. I should be used to it, but. Uh, uh, it's just a little bit too cold for me to go out, and I actually need to pick up a uh, prescription from the drugstore, so um, I'll have to wait a few more days. Uh, I wanted to uh, look at basically a something that comes up very often from our Muslim friends, and that is regarding basically uh, a passage from the Gospel of Mark. And... Um, where Jesus is asleep on the boat, and I want to uh, address that. I want to put together, uh, I put together a a presentation that I think they can really uh, answer uh, that question. But before we do so, uh, it would be really great if uh, you're not already, if you haven't already uh, subscribed uh, to my YouTube channel. I uh, really would appreciate it. It really helps me out. And it will keep you informed as I try to, uh, in this new year, to uh, address a lot of questions uh, uh, from Muslims and also to address the issues of, uh, uh, that, you know, questions that we should be asking Muslims uh, ourselves. I don't want it to be a, a one, you know, just a sort of a one-way street where uh, we are, you know, where Muslims are constantly asking questions, and some of them are legitimate questions, no doubt about it, and I do want to go out of my way to try to uh, answer these questions to the best of my ability. Uh, but anyways, uh, what I'm going, what we're going to look at basically today is, uh, oh, did, uh, look at today is basically on uh, Jesus being asleep in the boat and calming the storm. So let's bring up the presentation, shall we? And then afterwards, uh, the pres after the presentation, I'm going to make a few more comments. Well, I'm putting together this presentation. I was torn on uh, what title I should take because, uh, just because of the very nature of it. But I have decided to go with a sleep in the boat and calming the storm. However, uh, I was con considering uh, the High Christology in the Gospel of Mark, but possibly both titles are appropriate. Our, my friend Shabir Ali uh, talks that, uh, has done a, no a number of presentations that uh, when we read the Gospel of Mark, we have a very uh, low Christology. However, I don't think he's correct in that. And one of the passages that he may uh, turn to, or other Muslims may turn to, particularly other Muslims that we see on Facebook, is basically a, a quote from Mark chapter 4, verse 38. And then they post this little picture that I've reproduced here of uh, Jesus is asleep on a cushion in the boat. And of course, God does not sleep. And here we go. And you're absolutely right. And Psalm uh, 121 verse 4 we read behold he that is Yahweh who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep and praise God that the God who watches over us neither slumber nor sleeps we can uh, know that when we sleep that our God is watching over us but we need to look at uh, the humanity of Jesus and this is where I think there's a lot of confusion by our Muslim friends, is that somehow uh, we are denying the humanity of Jesus, that Jesus was uh, fully human, that uh, when, uh, when Jesus entered into uh, his creation, he took on flesh. And... I think it's based on a false assumption by our Muslim friends. And I've uh, got this quote. I paraphrased it slightly from a, a good friend of mine, Ed, Edward Delcour, who has done a lot of work on the triunity of God. And I want to read this for you. 
when discussing the Trinity of the deity of Christ with our Muslim friends, we must be aware of their starting theological commitment, namely God is one in person. In other words, when the word one is applied to God, our Muslim friends read into the uh, word one person, and then of course they quote Deuteronomy 6, 4, Mark 12, uh, 29, and uh, very often they would quote as well uh, John 17, 3. Therefore, by default, the Muslim reinterprets monotheism, one God as one person. This is, um, this is not a one passage in all this. There is not one passage in all the scripture that really says that one, uh, that points to one God means one person. Therefore, Muslims read into the scriptures their own uh, false Unitarian presuppositions rather than allowing the Bible to speak for itself. And this is something that uh, I really think that uh, well, it really bothers me. Again, uh, Shabir Ali has a program, Let the Quran Speak. In this case, I think we should let the Bible speak, let the gospel speak, let all the gospels speak for themselves and read it as a whole rather than uh, getting into this uh, game of Bible ping pong. Uh, really, uh, to do so is, become, is quite disingenuous. So let's look at some scriptures. And this is from the prologue of John to see that uh, God, the Son, truly entered into his own creation. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as the only begotten from the Father, full of grace and truth. And so uh, I, there's a book, I, I believe it's by um, Bart Ehrman, on how, uh, how Jesus became God. Well, again, the title is misleading because, again, we don't uh, believe that Jesus became God. We believe that uh, God the Son became flesh. In other words, it's, it, it, it was a reverse uh, to it. So let's begin to look at some of the um, other scriptures. In And I'm quoting from, yes, I am quoting from uh, that rascal Paul uh, in Philippians chapter 2. And um, beginning at verse 6. Who although existing in the form of God, did not, con did not regard equality with God as something to be grasped. But he emptied himself, in other words, he, uh, Jesus emptied himself of any prerogative uh, of deity, those, those, or, um, and taking on the form of a slave, he, uh, and being made in the, in the likeness of man, and being found in the appearance of man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even to the point of death. In other words, what we see here is that in order to accomplish the will of the Father, God the Son took on flesh. He limited himself uh, in, in space and time. And then, and then as we continue, therefore God highly exalted him, bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee will bow uh, of those who are in heaven, on earth, and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Now my Muslim friends and anyone else who is outside of Christ, you will bow the knee to the Lord Jesus Christ. Maybe in this life, it may be in the next life, but you will bow the knee and you will confess that Jesus Christ is um, God to the glory of God the Father. Now, if you do it uh, in this life, you will reap eternal life. 
However, if you do it in the next life, you will be uh, eternally condemned. You'll be in the hellfire where for all eternity you will hate your prophet, hate all mankind, and hate God for all eternity. Just a warning. You know, the Bible does say that now is the day of salvation. So look, let's look at our passage here and see what we have. This is the passage that uh, our Muslim friends were quoting, basically for uh, where Jesus is asleep in the boat. But let's read, let's read the context. Let's get it all together and see what happens. We're beginning at um, verse 35. And on that day, when evening came, he said to them, let us go, and that is the disciples, let us go over to the other side. And leaving the crowd, they took uh, him along with them in the boat, just as he was, uh, other boats were with him. And a great windstorm arose, and the waves were breaking into the boat, so that the boat was already being filled up. And Jesus himself was, a, uh, was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. And they got, uh, got him up and said, Teacher, do you not care we are perishing? And he, that is Jesus, woke up, rebuked the wind, and said, Silence! Be still. And the wind died down and, the, and, and became perfectly calm. And he said to them, that is the disciples, why, is, why are you so cowardly? Do you still have no faith? And they became very afraid and said to him, who is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? And that's the verse we want to focus on. I mean, there's just so much here that we could look at. But uh, for the purposes of, of this video, we need to look at basically this last verse. You know, who is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? Well, let's take a look and see. When we, we, when we look at Psalm uh, 65, 7, who stills the roaring seas? <coughs> Excuse me, the roaring seas. The tumult, the tumult of the people. And so in the context, this is speaking of Yahweh. It's Yahweh who is able to uh, still and calm the sea. How can a mere man, how can a mere Rizul, how can a mere... Uh, prophet you know calm the seas this is this is a prerogative that belongs exclusively to god uh, psalm 89 8 and 9 O lord of hosts or O yahweh of hosts who is like you O mighty yahweh your faithfulness uh, surrounds us you rule the uh, swelling of the sea when its waves rise, you still them. And, and here we have the Psalms telling us it is Yahweh, God himself, that stills the sea. And yet our Lord Jesus Christ was able to do this. And let us go on. It doesn't. Uh, and this is almost prophetic. I, 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 it's, it's amazing how uh, Psalm 1 will, uh, 7, uh, 28 through 30 gives us a, a foretaste of what the Lord Jesus Christ will do. And then they cried to the Lord in their trouble and he brought them out of their distresses. He caused the storm to be still so that the waves and the seas were hushed and they were glad and they were quiet so that he guided them to their desired haven. And so we see this a prophetic word given uh, a thousand years before the Lord Jesus. Uh, I, 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 again, my Muslim friends, what do you do with this? What do you do with this? That you have again a mere Rasul, uh, a mere prophet, calming the sea. It's this is a prerogative that exclusively belongs to God. Uh, another one, too, that is, uh, at first I wasn't really thinking of including it, and then I said maybe that we should look. Let's read 
uh, Mark 6, we have another similar incident. There's a bit difference here. We have Jesus walking on the water. And that, and this, I believe, is recorded in all four Gospels, this, this one. So let's read it. And immediately, beginning at verse 45 of chapter 6, and immediately Jesus took his disciples and got into the boat, or rather, immediately Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go ahead of them to the other side of Bethsaida, while he himself was standing, uh, sending the crowds away. And after bidding them farewell, he said to, uh, he, uh, farewell, he left for the mountain to pray. And when it was evening, the boat was in the middle of the sea, and he was alone on the land. And seeing them straining at the oars, for the wind was against them, at about uh, the fourth watch of the night, uh, he came through them, walking on the water, and he was intending to pass them by. But when, he, but when they saw him walking on the sea, they thought it was a ghost, and they cried out, for uh, all they saw him, were, for all who saw him were terrified. But immediately he spoke with them and said, Take courage, it is I, do not be afraid. And when he got into the boat with them, the wind stopped, and they were utterly amazed. So, uh, for they uh, had not gained any insight into the loaves, and their hearts were hardened. Here we we have this story, and again it's in all four uh, Gospels, of Jesus walking on the water. Well, when we turn to, the, again, uh, the Old Testament, what does Job say about God? Who alone stretches out the heavens and tramples down the waters, or wa uh, the water of the sea, and again, this is something, again, that only God is able to do, that he is able to calm the sea and walking on the water. Again, a, 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 a foretaste of who and what the Lord Jesus was able to accomplish. So now we'll wrap it up and... Um, Oh my goodness, it's cold out there. It's uh, at least on the day of the recording, it's cold. It's minus uh, uh, 19, minus 20 degrees Celsius. Uh, fortunately, there's no wind chill, so uh, it's, uh, but that's still plenty cold, folks. It, it's getting too cold for this. And I'm a Canadian, I should be used to it, but uh, uh, it's just a little bit too cold for me to go out, and I actually need to pick up a. Uh, prescription from the drugstore, so um, I'll have to wait a few more days. Uh, I wanted to uh, look at basically a something that comes up very often from our Muslim friends, and that is regarding basically uh, a passage from the Gospel of Mark, and um, where Jesus is asleep on the boat, and I want to uh, address that. I want to put together a uh, I put together a, a presentation that I think they can really uh, answer uh, that question. But before we do so, uh, it would be really great if uh, you're not already, if you haven't already uh, subscribed uh, to my YouTube channel. I uh, really would appreciate it. It really helps me out. And it will keep you informed as I try to, uh, in this new year, to uh, address a lot of questions uh, uh, from Muslims and also to address the issues of, uh, uh, that, you know, questions that we should be asking Muslims uh, ourselves. I don't want it to be a, a one, you know, just a sort of a one-way street where uh, we are, you know, where Muslims are constantly asking questions. And some of them are legitimate questions, no doubt about it. And I do want to go out of my way to try to uh, answer these questions to the best of my ability. Uh, but anyways, uh, what I'm going, what we're going to look at basically today is, uh, oh, uh, look at today is basically on uh, Jesus being asleep in the boat and calming the storm. So let's bring up the presentation, shall we? 
and then afterwards, uh, the after the presentation, I'm going to make a few more comments.